Hey everyone, what's up? Mirai here and welcome to another IS Boxer video. In this one, I'll be giving an overview on how to set up a more efficient method of using follow and assist, which a lot of games don't take advantage of right out of the box. Now this method is going to require a bit more setup on your part, but it's a lot more flexible compared to the default settings. So when using the quick setup wizard, more often than not, the final step will default to the top option under the game key bindings tab. This is entirely game dependent, but most games default to this option. This option not only relies on the F keys for targeting, but it requires that your characters be listed in a specific party order as well. Two things which can really restrict you when trying to do certain activities in game. But it's set as the default option because it requires the least amount of work on the player's part in order to just start multiboxing from the get-go. However, we're going to be talking about the second option on this tab, specifically the simplified option. Now, not all games are going to have access to this simplified option in the wizard, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't set it up yourself and still use it. So F11 and F12 are used by default for the follow and assist key bindings, and while you can change them, it's hardly ever necessary to do so, and I'm going to be leaving them as they are for this video. However, if you're setting this up in an already established profile, then you may see different keys listed here since the wizard pulls them from the already existing variable keystrokes in your profile. If that's the case, then you can either just leave them as they are if you're familiar with what you're doing, or just change them yourself to what I'll be using so that it's easier to follow along. So, after finishing the quick setup wizard, you can see that under each slot of the character set, the slot ID FTL modifiers are now selected, and each slot uses its own unique modifier or combination of. Now, I need to say something about these modifiers before moving forward. There are both left and right modifiers listed here to use, but almost every game views modifiers as just plain old alt, control, or shift. They do not differentiate between the specific left and right versions. This means that in most games you'll be limited to only the seven unique left modifier combinations of modifier keys to use at any given time. This normally isn't an issue for most multiboxers, but if you need more than seven, then I suggest you check out the non-simplified version of this setup, and there will be a link in the description for that. Now, in addition to the slot ID modifiers, the wizard sets up both the assist FTL and follow FTL keys under the variable keystroke section down here. And these are the same keys that we just saw in the wizard. So at this point, we're done in IS Boxer, and we can move over to the game. Now, once you're in game, this is where you'll be put to work. Using the information from IS Boxer, you're going to have to create follow and assist macros for each of your characters and then give them the proper key binding. But what's the proper key binding? Well, back on the final step of the wizard, it showed modifier plus F11 for follow and modifier plus F12 for assist. And those modifier keys are the same ones assigned under each slot that I showed a moment ago. So the proper key binding for the follow macro for the character who resides in slot 1 is going to be Shift F11. Slot 2 is going to be Alt F11. Slot 3 is going to be Control F11. And so on and so forth down the list of slot ID modifiers. These are the modifiers used in order to follow or assist that particular slot. So, when you press your follow key, for example Alt F, and you're playing from the character in slot 1, the other characters are going to be sent Shift F11 as per what we configured in the wizard. And you're going to need a follow character name macro on your other character's hotbars, which will be assigned to Shift F11. So let me break this down and I'll start off by showing the macros that I've created for this team. You can see that I've created one follow macro and one assist macro for each character in my party. And I've done this on each of my characters in my team. Now, my character in slot one is Sorvenar, and I've created a follow Sorvenar macro on each of my other characters. I then assigned the macro to this hotbar, and I gave it a key binding of Shift F11, which you should be able to see labeled on the button itself, but let me bring up the key bindings options to give a better picture. There are some odd text wrapping issues on these buttons, but I think you can tell what is bound to each key. My four follow bindings, which use F11, are on the top, and my four assist bindings, which use F12, are on the bottom. So, when I press my follow key from Sorvenar's window, 
The other characters are sent Shift F11, and they execute the macro, which tells them to follow him. And of course, since I've set up follow macros for all of my characters already, follow works great from any character. I'll also demonstrate some more following and assisting while I talk a bit more about this. Now I'm sure you're saying, well, I can already do this with my basic setup and I didn't have to spend the time writing follow and assist macros. So what's so special about this? Well, for those who run a full party and never expect the order of the party members to be out of their control, then this setup probably won't do much for you. However, if the order of your party members is constantly changing, like if you're jumping into raids or you're inviting others into your party or others are inviting you, then this method is going to be the one you'll want to set up because the basic follow and assist, which relies on the F keys for targeting, is not going to work correctly if the party order is out of your control or constantly changing. But even if you run a full party, you may find yourself thrown into a raid at some point where the F keys fail to target the correct character which means you're either going to be trying to fix things on the fly or just drop in group because your setup may be completely broken when the order of the party changes. You'll notice that my party members are not in the same order as they're listed in my character set. And that's because with this setup, they don't have to be. The only real drawback to this method of follow and assist is if you have a lot of different characters that you switch between on a regular basis because you'll be constantly updating each macro to reflect the new party member. But even then, it's as easy as turning on repeater and just making the proper change. So to recap what you need to do in order to set this up. First, on the final step of the wizard, select the Use Per Character Targeting Macros option under the Game Key Bindings tab and ensure that the simplified box is checked. Second, in the game that you're playing, create a follow and assist macro on each of your characters for each of your characters in your party. And third, assign those macros their proper key bindings. Generally, this means that you will be dragging and dropping those user-created macros onto a hotbar somewhere and assigning those hotbar buttons the proper key bindings. Proper key bindings being the modifier key of that slot paired up with the assist FTL or follow FTL binding, which is set under the variable keystroke section of IS Boxer. Well, that's pretty much all there is to this method of follow and assist, but if you want another take on it, then you can watch me give a recap of it on camera in Final Fantasy XIV, or you can watch me show how to convert the basic follow and assist method to the simplified method in Ion. And for any further questions, comments, or concerns, please visit the Iceboxer forum or the live chat.